This is just how we do it here. It's probably something you've heard if you've worked in a restaurant kitchen before. It's a statement that evokes a sense of authority while dismissing the potential for new ideas. And it's part of a much larger force at play, not just in restaurants, but American society. That is, anti-intellectualism. If you're not familiar, anti-intellectualism is a social attitude that undermines science-based facts, subject matter experts, and the pursuit of theory and knowledge. It comes in three basic categories. The first is anti-rationalism, which is usually associated with religion. This rejects reason, logic, and facts in favor of emotions, morals, and religious principles. Then there's populist anti-elitism, where institutions and the intellectual elite are seen as the enemy. And finally, unreflective instrumentalism, where the pursuit of theory and knowledge are seen as unnecessary because it's not practical and can't be used for something like profit. So why is anti-intellectualism so popular in restaurants? It all goes back to the brigade system, which was popularized by Chef Escoffier in the early 1900s and continues to be used today. There are two defining characteristics of a brigade system. The first is a strict hierarchical chain of command where orders from the top are obeyed without question. The other is a specialization of roles per worker to the point of rote memorization. The brigade draws a lot from the military as well as the efficiency movement with the purpose of creating maximum output by delineating between workers and managers. Put together, the brigade system reinforces anti-intellectualism because it distorts the way people perceive power structures. It encourages workers to romanticize toxic workplaces as part of their tough identity. Folks advocating for better working conditions are depicted as lazy and ostracized using an us versus them mentality. Anti-intellectualism serves those in power by rationalizing, ignoring systemic issues that play the restaurant industry as extraneous or above our pay grade. Privileged messaging like our focus is just creating an excellent guest experience depoliticizes the reality of the food industry and the experiences of food workers, the majority of whom are BIPOC. Context and education about how our food systems evolved to be what they are today, like the racist history of tipping or the xenophobic and sexist laws around minimum wage, are somehow considered unnecessary and elitist. This isn't an accident. It's a very effective way of preventing workers from gaining the knowledge they need to change a system that is actively harming them. In the same vein, workers are discouraged from learning other business practices like intellectual property rights by othering this information as somehow irrelevant. Anti-intellectualism is embedded into strategies that turn workers into cogs so they have less career opportunities and can be more easily taken advantage of. Now that you can name the bigger picture at play when open discussion and new ideas are shut down at your workplace, you can make a change. Together, we can stop buying into the socialization that tells us developing critical thinking skills as well as the pursuit of knowledge and self-fulfillment is somehow not meant for us as food industry workers. You can learn more about anti-intellectualism at the pinned post in my Instagram, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to follow along for more industry analyses.